Hi, Lou here. This is more or less a nuts and bolts of game design piece. And I'm going to talk about requirements for owning territories or areas in games. Now, the game that people are most familiar with of this type, which is a game for more than two players, is Risk. And in Risk, you're required to leave at least one army in an area. And so every area on the board is always occupied by one army or another. But you can have a vast number of armies in risk once you start turning in cards. So it's not so onerous to have to leave armies in places on the 42 territories. In my game Britannia, you have to occupy a territory to own it, but you can abandon it. You can move out. So it gives you more flexibility. And if you want to own more territory, then you've got to spread out and risk your armies. In Axis and Allies, which uses yet another method, you own a territory you've occupied until the enemy occupies it. Of course, Axis and Allies is a two-player game. Batani is a four-player game. Risk is two to six. And this method requires control markers of some kind, which are achieved by small round markers in Axis and Allies. In the third edition of Britannia, which will be out in two or three years, it, it exists now, but it's not presently being tested. It was tested for a while. You cannot abandon an area unless you score no points for it. Then you can abandon the area in favor of moving to another area that you do score points for, which we've ended up calling settled nations. And the idea is, in the Dark Ages, if you're farmers, you're not going to move out until you're forced out. And the idea in Britannia always was that the armies represent primarily farmers. Now, in the later part of the period, a thousand years covered by Britannia, there are house carls, which are not exactly a standing army, but are professionals. But in the early part of the history, there are no professionals other than the Romans. The armies consist of farmers. Some of them may be better equipped, some worse equipped. But those armies are not going to move out of an area while there's still viable farms there. They're going to have to be pushed out. And that's the idea behind the settled nations. Now, to counteract that, because it limits how much players can attack, I've added something called forays. And what that means is it's a kind of a raid where armies, even the ones who cannot abandon an area because they're the only army there, can nonetheless go and attack an adjacent place and once the attack is over, they must go back. They can't choose to stay in the place that they've raided. Now, this turns out to be a whole lot like what actually happened in the history, where most of the attacks were raids and not attacks to conquer. And so I'm happy with how that has worked out. And it's interesting for the players. There is a limit on how many armies can attack. I think it, in a four, I think it's four because otherwise Lothian becomes a terrible death trap because it's got about seven different areas adjacent to it and anybody in Lothian can be attacked from all those places at once unless you have that limit of four. So there are a lot of ways to decide how these things work and they make a big difference in how the game plays. And so I encourage you to experiment with those various ways when you're designing a game of this kind. Thanks for listening.